can you please introduce yourself to, to the wider YouTube community and other people on social media? Sure. Um, so, well, my, my name is Gerard. Uh, that's, that part is obvious. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm the director uh, of the iShare Foundation. Um, started that end of last year. Um, and basically, it's, uh, the foundation falls under my responsibility to get, uh, get the potential uh, that is put into it over the last couple of years by the, the founders and predecessors yeah. um, to, uh, to get it going. My background is I've been in, in, in technology for well, close to 25 years already. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as an entrepreneur, I started originally uh, at 18 with my first software company. Okay. Uh, spent, uh, spent some time in, uh, in the bigger corporate world uh, yeah. uh, in, uh, in, in the strategy uh, uh, space uh, for, uh, for a big telecom operator. Yeah. Um, then moved into uh, uh, to the uh, basically the financial area uh, in private equity, running a few companies uh, for private equity, and I've been uh, entrepreneur again for the last five years, uh, building new new software companies and really focusing on yeah. uh, on scalability and finding uh, finding well growth areas with uh, with technology, and that's yeah. why also the well, the supervisory board of the iShare Foundation thought uh, well. I could I could help with this process, and as I uh, well, I'm, I'm just a bit activistic in uh, in how I look at at businesses and uh, and and technology. Uh, it needs to to have a positive impact, and that's what I want to uh, to spend my time on uh, building stuff that is impacting how how companies work together, but especially how value chains get shorter and and smarter. So yeah. that's what I do with the software companies uh, that uh, that I have next to. Uh, 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 the work that I do uh, for the iShare Foundation. So, and the iShare Foundation is a perfect fit to that. So it all closely fits together. In the end, well, let's let's make this world uh, smarter and, uh, and really work together in a different way. Instead of well, taking value, it's, it's really about sharing, uh, sharing value and uh, get, uh, uh, I mean, there's, there's probably an end to the, the, the growth curve, but there's much more value if we start collaborating in, in that way. So a very strong footing in both technology, data sharing, and entrepreneurship. Yeah, exactly. And that's what well, you, you mentioned that in the beginning, but that's exactly what we're trying to do with, with iShare as well. Well, take an entrepreneurial way uh, and not a scientific way, because the only way to get companies on board is when you bring immediate value to companies. So that's what we're really trying to do with, uh, with iShare Foundation, get to real, uh, get solving real people problems. Could you elaborate a little bit more on iShare and what iShare is, what the goal of iShare is yep. in terms of data sharing? Totally. Um, so iShare is, a, is an is initiative originally by the, well, basically the Dutch government. And uh, uh, we have uh, a few areas where the government is, uh, is seeing the potential for digitization. And one of those areas is, uh, is logistics. And, They've been uh, working with uh, with the industry to figure out hey, what what are the barriers to actually collaborate um, between companies and uh, also share data, share insights, and all that. Yeah. And one of one of the key learnings from from that exercise um, is that well, what is required to start collaborating, and it, it's totally obvious, but it's trust. And yeah. So uh, to to get uh, into a collaboration, uh, trust is required, knowing who's on the other side, but also in a sense that that's also trust, knowing what the other person, the other company is actually doing with that information that you're sharing. Yeah. And that is, that seems um, so obvious, but um, it, apparently it, there was no real sort of industry solution for that. Yeah. Um, and that's where basically iShare started uh, with building up a, a a few building blocks that are required for the more complicated data sharing cases. Yeah, because yeah. What it, what iShare does is it it uh, gives identity, it gives uh, uh, authentication and authorization um, of uh, well of data users and data sharing. Yeah. And it's uh, it's basically a scheme, uh, which is an awfully fake term. It, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but a but a scheme is uh, is basically uh, there's a there's a foundation that operates this scheme. And under that scheme, all the participants uh, agree to the same terms. 
so they agree that they can uh, only uh, use data if they um, uh, are in line with the terms of use and uh, that they uh, make use of, uh, sort of it, it's called an authorization register which is not a very complicated name to what it does um, which uh, in that authorization register you can check what someone can do and cannot do with uh, with information whether they can access uh, data either on behalf of themselves or on behalf of their company or on behalf of someone else yeah um, so that's that's where it's all, where it all started um, and then obviously the case is where to uh, where to get it into reality because the, the idea is cool and uh, well how it's implemented uh, there's a uh, there's a scheme administrator there's a there's a team working on uh, building new uh, new data sharing cases yeah. But what we what we concluded is that well, uh, the digitization stage of uh, of logistics is really uh, well sort of b behind, and I'm not trying yeah. to, to blame blame anyone here. But uh, yeah. you see that um, like if you look at digital transactions, uh, it's only like five percent of the transactions that are actually basically API driven and uh, in in a sense automated. The rest is all human interaction with platforms and uh, and, and uh, in terms of transactions, uh, wh what are examples for people who are not uh, that much into logistics themselves? And so the, the stuff that is automated, so that's again only like fifty percent, uh, five percent of uh, uh, of data uh, data interactions. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but but that's talk that that is cargo data, for instance, or uh, uh, order data. To, to give order, someone an yeah. order to, to to bring something from A to B, to uh, overly simplify it maybe, but yeah, um, yeah. But that information uh, that that needs to be available, and currently there there are platforms in between that. So, and when you look at what's happening in the in the logistics uh, space, uh, there there are a lot of platforms, and everybody has their own accounts. Yeah. So, uh, even if you want to go say more advanced in terms of data sharing it's super complicated because there's no harmonization of identities across those platforms okay so what, we, what we came to the where we came to the conclusion as uh, as iShare is that we started uh, currently with just providing iShare uh, identities under the scheme to two portals and as a first stage so we're, we're basically using uh, the iShare scheme as a single sign-on mechanism yeah uh, to to log on to portals uh, get access but also collect information share data uh, on uh, on portals and that is the, that is the first step into well preparing for more uh, more advanced cases where you actually do bilateral data sharing yeah and what do you think are for companies the main uh, motivations for sharing data through iShare? Expect that it just makes it easier um, because on the website there are mentioned specific examples of improving optimization of processes and competitiveness. So, what are um, do you have any use cases examples of that? I saw one of the container uh, on, on container data being shared. Yeah, so if you look at what what uh, uh, what we are uh, hunting uh, from from an, an iShare perspective to have the most most value um, is first to have an, have the ability to share uh, cargo data yeah. because if you have the ability to share that cargo data and to be able to do that you have to uh, have a, uh, have the uh, the identities harmonized yeah um, but the next step is using uh, uh, ECMR and Maybe you know the, the FT um, uh, standardization process, so FT data, uh, where you can share uh, cargo information across modalities. So uh, whether it's on a truck or on a on a, on a ship or on a, on a plane or wherever, yeah. that should be uh, that should be sort of a transparent way to uh, uh, to to see where your products are. Yeah. So that is that is the core use case that uh, that we're after to make it. Uh, possible for users to access the cargo data at another company through the same uh, the, through the scheme because you know yeah. it's my cargo and I can just uh, collect that information from well maybe the CMR provider that, that's one of the use cases for working with a company called Collect and Go uh, they they are an e an eCMR provider but also it's a company called Transfollow mm -hmm. they all do eCMR 
processing and they mm -hmm. make that HTML data available. Yeah. And through iShare, you could uh, access that uh, that CMR data um, because uh, in the authorization register, it's registered that it's your cargo, so you are allowed to uh, to access that information. Yeah. So that is a, that is an example that is um, that seems obvious. That's really a first first step. But if yeah. we can do that, we can do optimization of ETAs. We can optimization of insurance. That's another yeah. use case we're working on. Yeah. Uh, basically, everything that is that is required uh, in terms of well, uh, the the entire logistical process. Um, yeah. And the good thing of that is um, it's it's so sort of standard in a sense what we're doing that is that is replicable replicable to uh, to other verticals. So obviously the shippers are from another vertical because they they ship products whatever it is and yeah currently with in discussions with the construction industry they are shipping stuff on trucks and they want to have access to where their goods are so yeah in that sense iShares really spreading and um, to all those like, the users of, uh, of logistics and that's been the the core vision starting with something that, that everybody uses and, yeah. and what well, just make make the economy uh, and the industry more efficient more open uh, uh, and more, more open to uh, to innovation so just to be clear so organizations they can uh, customize terms and, co and conditions under which they share their data or is it several formats that are being adopted it's first of all identity and then uh, authentication and authorization yeah. and in that authorization register that's where um, you share the rights uh, of others uh, in that uh, under the scheme but there's a generic uh, well a set of agreements mm -hmm. both legally and operationally yeah um, and that's that's generic so everybody falls under exactly the same terms of use yeah okay because that's that's the core principle of being a trust framework yeah yeah, yeah. okay and and what's what is also great to mention is that iShare is not it's not a platform it's not in between transactions we're just enabling that uh, from a, a legal and operational view and what we what we have is the, the standard structures and the standard apis between companies to collaborate and that is uh, that is how we uh, well, try to to stimulate and help everyone to uh, to move forward mm -hmm. uh, and we and we do that in a federated way so um, yeah yeah the, the the identities are just from identity providers that are under the scheme and um, the authentication register uh, authorization register is also an independent uh, vendor that is providing authorization register services yeah so and um, and with that with that principle it can spread not only in the netherlands but we're also active in in germany already working in, okay in um uh, in luxembourg like, look, looking for other area belgium uh, yeah, yeah. is in operation and even broader even outside of europe we're, we're already in uh, in in discussions to uh, have i share basically uh, identity providers all over the place so we can uh, make it really easy for uh, for users to really start working under the scheme yeah so in, in which phase are you in in setting up i share because uh, are you working with with local partners in in the Benelux and Germany, or is it that iShare wants to expand in these countries? So we we're, we're aiming to uh, to expand uh, yeah. in a sense, uh, but obviously start in uh, uh, at home in the Netherlands, yeah, where yeah. Uh, where everything is uh, is started. Um, but logis the, the the logistical movements are. Uh, of course, throughout Europe, throughout the yeah. world, so it it yeah. hits everything uh, in the in the logistics process, um, and from that sense, uh, we're just open for for anyone anyone else to uh, to join uh, under the scheme to become an identity provider, become an authorization register, become a uh, a participant. Um, the the foundation itself is uh, is still Dutch, but we're currently also working on collaborations with other well, similar schemes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's uh, and and do you mean like schemes in other sectors or um, or schemes in in other countries? Because in terms of other sectors, maybe there are other sectors that are also uh, working with a certain platform like iShare that you can take as an example or 
certain countries where they have a very um, developed platform of data sharing in logistics? Um, so we, we haven't seen it. There, there are a lot of platforms already. So yeah. what we basically do is do that uh, that access site, that identity and authorization to those platforms. And that that is that's currently the first step to uh, uh, to do data sharing. So if you look at um, if we're talking about platforms, uh, uh, some of our partners uh, or participants in uh, in the Netherlands are companies like Portbase and Cargonaut, uh, who are basically the platforms for the port industry for the uh, for the airline yeah. industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if we look at the first uh, real cases, uh, it's a company like uh, ECT, which is mm -hmm. Ports. Mm -hmm. They uh, they let uh, their users their uh, all the trucks that that arrive at their uh, uh, their facilities, but also on their uh, on their app on their website, they have uh, get access to through the use of iShare. So okay. that's 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 already in in operation, and and because we do that with identity providers, there, uh, well, Secure Logistics is one of the identity providers under the scheme, and they already have forty thousand users. Uh, that uh, that can use iShare as a uh, as a login mechanism. Uh, uh, on a daily basis, so yeah. we're really get, getting somewhere, um, well, in uh, in making uh, making this available and um, basically laying the the uh, well, the, the cornerstones or the uh, the foundation for uh, for data sharing. Given, because iShare I know has been running now for a while. It's not a baby project anymore, not something that's new, so to speak. But how? Can you share how it has been impacted by this medical alert that we find ourselves in? I really see well, a, a faster move to, uh, to, uh, to going digital uh, yeah. in, in a lot of industries, of course. And, and I think that also uh, happens for, uh, for iShare and, uh, uh, and how, we, how we work today. We have, a, um, uh, we have an adoption team that is working well, every day on figuring out uh, and uh, Finding new uh, new data sharing cases, um, and where we see the, the the biggest move now is really that well first that single sign on approach, but also the 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 ECMR cargo data sharing uh, cases because that's where the immediate value already is. is yeah. And is that directly related to COVID nineteen? Maybe maybe not. Uh, yeah. it, it at least uh, everybody is now more aware that digital is. Uh, is really the way to go. So, um, but still, um, it's uh, it, it's it's a lot of work to get stuff going. If you, what do you think about the future of iShare and data sharing for um, the logistics and transport sector uh, in a post-COVID nineteen world? There's a lot of impact uh, yeah. of COVID on 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 all sectors, um, and all sectors uh, use transportation again. So there's there's definitely a, a, a correlation. Um, but I think everybody uh, uh, now really gets gets aware uh, how important it is to well, work together in a in a closer way, find uh, find efficiencies, uh, find uh, find ways to do things uh, things smoother. Yeah. Um, so it, it seems to accelerate uh, well at least the digital uh, awareness in uh, in logistics. Yeah. So, do you even see like an increase in in companies that want to work with iShare? Uh, well, we we see uh, definitely see an increase because there's okay. a there's just a gener generic um, awareness of uh, of the potential of uh, of data sharing and collaboration structures. Yeah. But uh, but on the other hand, um, what we're really uh, trying to do uh, with iShare is instead of finding well, the, the, the absolute coolest use cases with like three users, mm -hmm. and that's that's not the way to scale this. If you want to lay the foundation, we want to make sure that we really hit thousands and thousands of users. So yeah. we're currently in discussions with, with all uh, portals and, uh, and online services uh, in, in logistics, but also outside of that to basically start using uh, iShare identities uh, as, uh, as access mechanism. Because that's really the first step to get stuff going. Yeah. And on my part is now that COVID-19, or the elephant in the room, so to speak, is addressed. What 
do you see the biggest challenges facing iShare are? Or are there challenges to you and iShare moving forward? Well, the, there's, uh, I think the main challenge for, um, uh, for, the da for data sharing in general, um, and not per se uh, COVID related, but it's in, it's in general, um, everybody's working on their own, say piece of the puzzle their own yeah their own stamp and they're they're all wired to do that super operationally efficient um yeah and and it's super hard still for people to grasp the concept of collaborating across verticals so that is um that is i think the main challenge that we've seen in the last years uh, because i shares uh, has been around but well, there was a the main the main hurdle is to make people aware and make make people feel what the potential is so that's um well with, with the stuff that we're trying to do is to and, and the, say the low hanging fruit is giving access to portals and, and and start sharing cargo data in that way people start to get the concepts in an easier way yeah and then and then it becomes more valuable yeah. but we really need and uh, say cross-cutting use cases that uh, uh that really bring also well financial value to uh, uh, to users yeah because so far it's uh, it's been a fight of um, well world peace as we we always say with an i share and uh, world peace is is a hard thing to sell and um, and we're not selling we're we're a foundation we're not uh, we're not on it for 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 profit but we're on it to to make this industry better yeah uh, but but then again it's still tough when you're uh, acting on behalf of the entire industry and not per se for one user so that's where yeah. we we started our initiative to uh, to develop uh, basically an insurance we're working together with an insurance company to create a, a more efficient uh, insurance for cargo yeah. because based on that that open data uh, or that that data access of, uh, of cargo and with that there's already a financial benefits to uh, uh to all uh, all companies in the transportation and logistics uh, industry interesting point there about um balancing the expectations and basically what other entities and what other companies want and want to focus on not just in terms of data sharing but in how they operate and in their general running how do you address those challenges so we're trying to find um well i always say real people problems Instead yeah. of go, going after hypothetically uh, super valuable cases uh, that uh, may not happen every day, is so that's that's when we're talking about access to portals. What I'm, I'm not kidding. There's uh, when you when you jump into uh, 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 even those, the smaller logistics companies, they're just passwords on their screens. So there's already a, a big issue when it comes to to security and safety of uh, of the use of those uh, those services. So that's yeah. real people problems, and that yeah. same goes for that uh, that value chain, uh, basically transparency with uh, uh, with cargo data on based on FT or ECMR. Um, that is that is a real people problem because currently they're on the phone the entire day to explain where stuff is, um, and uh, it's hard because you you usually work not in a bilateral agreement, but you uh, you transport something for. Uh, uh, for a company, company A, and that goes through transport company A, B, C, D, and uh, you want to know uh, what is happening at company D because, but you're you're not accessing that. So there's that tra that value chain transparency is really a need to uh, uh, well to simplify the entire process. Perfect. And um, is there is there anything that uh, anything else that people should really know about iShare well, that I we haven't I discussed yet. So I, I express the key messages what we're what we're doing and trying to do. And um, the point is iShare is not a platform and we're uh, we're federated so we welcome identity providers to come on board, especially internationally uh, because there's there's so much potential in that and basically we're we're all working on uh, making making industry safer and, uh, uh, and and more efficient, but also in a sense cyber resilient. Um, so that is that is a key thing, uh, and that is really the foundation to uh, to get data sharing going. Yeah. Um, so uh, that open 
principle, just yeah, join us. And the second thing is we're not uh, bound to logistics. We take yeah. care of uh, under the scheme of ident identification and authorization, um, and have the uh, have the set agreements and, and legal uh, framework in place. So uh, it's it's already there. So if you're working on a uh, on a scheme to uh, start data sharing, but just uh, start using iShare, and uh, that saves you a lot of time. And let's jump into the real uh, the real data. So uh, how we do that internationally, we work together with other uh, other standards, other schemes, like the well, International Data Spaces Association. We have a close collaboration with them, where iShare is just the first step of uh, the IDS uh, well, uh, standard or uh, principles. So yeah, just final, as an example. The final remark, then also I'm linking to what you're saying, stepping out from your role in iShare and as you as Gerard, what yes. would you like to say to the data sharing community out there about data sharing? Well, uh, let's collaborate. I think the, the whole point of data sharing is not sharing data, but uh, building uh, building new value. Um, and uh, that starts with uh, really uh, looking across the wall. I see data sharing initiatives in verticals uh, that are that are currently happening a lot. Um, but that gives the same issue as we had before, that it's optimized within a vertical. I think the key value for uh, for Europe and for the world is that we do cross-cutting across verticals, and that's where where well stuff like I share like and and the more advanced data sharing principles are really key to well make make this world a better place in the end. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your time today to speak with us. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for sh sharing your knowledge on this topic. Uh, I think we definitely learned a lot and gained a lot more insights. So thank you so, so much for your time. And we invite. You. What's, what's your what's your key key learning from from this? You say you learned a lot. So that's that's also interesting to well flip the coin. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think I really like your final quote that data sharing is not just about sharing data, but that it's mainly about collaboration and actually building value. And I think it's really key that people shouldn't um, stick in their own vertical, as you would say it. So I think that's also very... Um, yeah, a very important contribution of data sharing is that people think out of their own box and, and start collaborating. Yeah, and, and a key thing, a key principle in all those cases is data sovereignty. I haven't mentioned yeah. that yet so far, but that's what it's all about. That trust framework creates uh, a situation where you know what's happening with your information and you are not abused by, say, a platform player that is taking uh, taking all your data and, and sucking that up, but by uh, by having a a scheme that is protecting your data sovereignty, and uh, that is the way to go. That creates yeah. the trust that you can really build new value instead yeah. of just being dependent under uh, under a platform. I will close though to make it full circle for what I learned. And I also want to compliment you on this because you started a talk saying that trust is required for collaboration between parties. So Sadaya liked how you ended it, going back to collaboration and uh, meeting the data sharing helps us to in communicate with one another and not to be stuck in our own verticals. And that links very neatly to how you introduced um, yourself in this about how trust is required between parties for collaboration, how data is traveling and being managed and communicated between everyone involved. I guess this is right. us to reiterate our thank you for taking the time for the hour almost to talk. Yeah. Super. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll Great be, day. Be in touch. Yes.